What is the fabric of imagination, dreams, and illusion composed of? All there is is energy. The energy itself is pure consciousness. Energy or consciousness in stillness is nothing, quite literally nothing, an emptiness. The substance of nothingness can be described as an ocean of possibilities, pure energetic potential that is not employed or has not committed itself yet. Energy or consciousness that becomes aware of itself creates energetic vibrations. Energy being self-aware is also aware of the energetic vibrations. When self-aware consciousness takes a measurement of these energetic vibrations, then a measurement of these energetic vibrations is realized. Undeterminable potential becoming. From the unrealized, a realization manifest. This is what gives form to the formless, what gives shape to the shapeless. But energetic vibrations that become a measurement all decay. They all revert back into being unrealized potential. Anything that manifests in a wave of possibilities will ultimately return to the wave of possibilities. This is vibration in nothingness. All vibrations eventually decay. No energetic vibration can be forever sustained. Only energy itself is forever sustained. Nothingness itself is the changeless, infinite context that change takes place in. An observation is made, and therefore there is something to be observed. The five senses are some of the tools that consciousness is currently using to take measurements and make observations. So the eyes take energetic vibrations and convert them into sight. The ears take energetic vibrations and convert them into hearing. Anything you smell, taste, or touch are also a measurement of energetic vibrations. All measurements taken by the five senses ultimately decay. And consider the implications of this, that simple measuring tools led up to the construction of your modern-day computer. And in the future, if there ever is such a thing as pure AI, artificial intelligence, this will be defined through how the artificial intelligence spontaneously reacts to measurements taken. And computers are much like mankind. It is the same fundamental principles that allows each to exist. From energy sources come processing memory, measurement, and applications. When consciousness begins to take measurements, this builds a foundation, a context, wherein which consciousness can form an attachment and thereby create an identity. A point of perception is thereby fully sustained in a context. So points of perception sustain themselves into pre-existing contexts. The context always being that which is molded through measurement and observation. The context was established by earlier points of perception and a succession of points of perception. Even though there is a succession of points of perception, there is no time in it. There is only a now that points of perception pop in and out of. But since the context that was created through measurement and observation by points of perception that succeeded you are subject to decay, points of perception that were succeeded must always make new measurements and observations to create continuation of the context. But any and all contexts are all 
just descriptions of reality. Think of it in terms of music. Different instruments create vibrations, what we're calling notes or sounds. If the notes and sounds are complementary to each other, if they are in harmony, you have music. If the notes and sounds are not complementary or are out of harmony, you have noise. A single note played or a single sound cannot be called either music or noise. It is only a succession of notes or sounds that make either music or noise. There's not any one particular thing within a body of music that you can use to identify the body of music. It's not one particular note, it's not one particular instrument. It is only a succession of overlapping events that go into making up a body of music. And even though there's a succession of notes and sounds, it is only the now moment where music or noise is experienced. So even though music and noise, which is a succession of vibrations, a continuation of notes and sounds, gives an impression of a duration or a body of sound, there is no duration or body of sound. All notes and sounds take place in the now. They pop in and out of existence in the now. And anyway, where is that body of sound? Where is that body of music? The body of sound does not exist independent of what is creating the body of sound. It only exists when it's happening and as it's happening. Members of a band create vibrations on instruments, which creates music. The music is alive as it's happening. The band stops playing, the music stops also. Where is the music when the band stops playing? There is only life in music while it's being played. So music has no form by itself. Because when the music stops, it has vanished. It is literally nowhere. All you have is a memory of that vibration. The vibration itself is gone. It does not have some independent existence somewhere. It is gone. It is nowhere. Your memory of music does not prove anything about the realness of music. And neither does any kind of audio recording prove anything real about music. All it proves is that a measurement of energetic vibration can be recorded. Recordings are much like memories. Same thing. Just like memories, recordings are subject to decay. All formats that are mediums of preservation whether audio tape, video tape, film, or even hard drive memory, are all subject to decay, and the data that was collected on these mediums of preservation will be gone if they do decay. So if not copied and transferred into a new memory format, all recordings and measurements will vanish. So when it comes to a description of reality, a context that was created by points of perception. As with music, the same can be said to be true. If points of perception measure, observe, and create in harmony with one another, then harmony will be realized. If points of perception measure, observe, and create in disharmony with one another, then disharmony will be realized. This is why it is futile to cling to an old description of reality, especially one that is in disharmony. Why do we not mold a description of reality that is in harmony? Because we have no choice about creating a new description of reality anyway. A new description of reality must be made. It is not an option. 
does all previous observations and measurements made to sustain the context that you're clinging to are all subject to decay. So what it boils down to is energetic vibrations that manifest and then dissipate. All energetic vibrations can be measured and interpreted. Which brings us to the question, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Of course not. There is no sound. There is only a vibration. It is only when there's an ear nearby to convert that vibration into a sound that a sound occurs. So the very act of measurement and observation is what creates the perception. 